Cordy Nicholas, and I'm here to talk about when the mayor comes a calling. Yes, this is going to be episode 175, and we are going to talk about the events of this last Tuesday. You see, I was at the McKinney ISD school board meeting, and well, who should come a calling but the McKinney city mayor? Now, I shall point out that there is absolutely nothing wrong with this i don't have any issue with this i think that it would be more interesting if other city council members or the mayor would show up from time to time at school board meetings and vice versa but the events have to do more with what transpired during the comments section you see normally the non-agenda items in public comment are moved to the end of the meeting and honestly i get it and and i respect it the people that come there to make their comments, particularly on non-agenda items, get to vent for three minutes. And then as soon as that's done, most of them will promptly leave. Now, if I'm running a meeting and I want people to understand and get information about what's going on, I would generally prefer them to have to stick around for the meeting before they have their commentary because we may in fact address their issue or answer their question prior to them getting up to speak. So I'm sympathetic to that. I think there might be some other motives at hand, but I I mean, that would be the way I would sell it. That would be the way that I think would be appropriate. So at the beginning, at the beginning of the meeting, um, the board president notifies us because there's only one person speaking on an agenda item. The, president felt it was okay to move the non-agenda item speakers to follow directly thereafter, which is the way it was previously before they changed it to going to the end. Again, clearly within her call, no, no problem there. It was a bit curious that it was the mayor that was there to speak on a non-agenda item that one could just casually observe, maybe cause this to occur. But, you know, I'm just speculating. Again, still within authority and purview. No issue. Well, we get to the uh, public speaking section and we're told we can talk about items. It is brought to our attention that we are not allowed to call out any member in the school district, including staff and school board members. Okay, well, typically this doesn't happen anyway. But occasionally somebody might reference it or point somebody out or whatever else. But I I can understand why you would want to protect individual members. No issue there. But when the time came and Mr. Mayor got up to speak, he spent his three minutes belittling and attacking one of the school board members who in fact was not present because they were still recovering from being sick. Now, before I go any further, it was also reported that the two of them might have been seen earlier together that day. Um, And one might speculate at that, that they discussed what might be said in the absence of this school board member. But Again, pure speculation here. Let's not go too far into the weeds because I'm fairly certain those two are friends outside of their political offices. So again, no big deal. Clearly nothing untoward there. But when we're instructed not to bring up people by name and then the first thing the mayor does is disregard that rule, that that request, and spend three minutes throwing that individual under the bus and blaming them for all that is wrong with the McKinney ISD and all the hate and vitriol and blah, 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 blah. Now, this is all recorded, and I encourage you, go to the McKinney ISD website and pull up the video, and you can listen to his comments. To me... Not only was there a flagrant disregard for the very request or rules laid out, I believe this was perhaps pre-planned. Just speculation or a educated guess, if you might, on my part. But I don't believe that 
The mayor goes anywhere to speak without knowing what he's going to do before he does it, as all good politicians, political people do. And again, I got to tell you, our mayor is a smart politician. Our mayor is very media savvy. Our mayor really knows how to play to the audience. The only thing was, is that audience wasn't buying it. You see, the majority of us that were out in the audience were actually there because we're not exactly thrilled with what's going on, that we're not exactly happy with what the school district or the school board's been doing on our behalf. And while one might make the argument that, you know, the municipal leadership should stay in their own lanes. No, again, I already said, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I think it's good. There should be interaction. But again, when you bring a pre-planned assault on a guy that's not there to defend himself, that's pretty low. That's pretty sad. And honestly, I thought better of our mayor than that. But that was my mistake. You know, I don't have to like our mayor's policies. I don't have to like our mayor's actions. But honestly, he's a personable guy when you talk to him. I mean, he he can really put on a gregarious uh, personality. And, and none of that's bad, but it's just sad. It's sad to behave like this. Now, my friend Chad's a big boy and Mr. Green will, I'm sure handle this however he sees fit. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a little fun with it going forward. But again, what's to be gained? The mayor was more or less booed. And then told goodbye when he left. Now, I'm sure he kind of enjoyed it and smirked on his way out the door. I get it. But again, what was gained? It certainly doesn't make the school board president look any better. And it certainly doesn't make the mayor look any better. It was... I'm kind of surprised. I'm surprised. I thought, like I said, I thought he was smarter than that. You know, you can say what you want about King George, but he is not a stupid man. And this just showed a lack of, I don't know, judgment, lack of sense. And in fairness to him, he has been wronged by people on my side of the aisle or my team, if you will. Some of my people have crossed the line and most all of them have apologized to my notice or to my note, uh, to my understanding, excuse me. So. That's not really pertinent, but I mean, two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, they did teach us that in Sunday school. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that this is nothing more than a Yankee act and a Yankee. And by that, I mean in the Brian McClanahan definition of Yankee. That's somebody that thinks they know better than you and requires that everybody do what they think is for their best based upon their decision and their definition. And our mayor made it quite clear that basically anybody that disagrees with him and his administration is his enemy. They're not worthy of his respect nor his time. Now, those may not have been the exact words, but that is exactly how everybody heard what he had to say. And to be so dismissive of, quote, unquote, a small minority of the city. Really? I wonder. I wonder if there's other people that are maybe in a different small minority in the city. If they would feel that way. Or they would feel okay with that, that the mayor was dismissing them. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that people that didn't look like me made up a quite a small minority of this uh, city. I mean, would that have been okay? Perhaps people that don't sound like me, they make up 10 to 12% of the city. Maybe they're a small minority and they should be dismissed as well. What do you think, Mr. Mayor? Is that a good option? Is that the way we should do things? Just disregard other people's concerns because wow, they're just a small minority. Accuse them of hate. Is that is that what works best for us going forward? I think not. So, In closing, I had the honor of coming up right after him and doing my best to dismiss what he had to say as largely unnecessary tripe. I then spent my time defending a man that I believe was wronged 
and was harmed by the actions and behavior of the school board themselves, perhaps in concert with the mayor, maybe not, perhaps in concert with certainly the uh, chief of police, but I could be wrong. I mean, I, somebody could sh- show me evidence otherwise, but I've heard that the chief of police met with the school board president prior to the meeting that my friend was arrested. I mean, I'm sure that had absolutely nothing to do with that. Correct. I mean, what would be the odds? Of course, my friend having to run for office against the mayor's anointed replacement for his previously anointed successor. I'm sure that had nothing to do with that. And and his major flaw, his major problem. Well, you're running against my administration. Really? It's your administration. I thought it was the city of McKinney. I thought everybody should have a voice. I thought all people deserve to be represented. But apparently only if you agree with what the mayor's agenda is, the mayor's administrative goals are. Now, I get it, right? All elected officials have a vested interest in who's going to serve with them. But really? We were supposed to tolerate all sorts of other stuff in a year or two ago. That was all fine and dandy. But now somebody that dares to question the narrative, somebody that, I don't know, just a little out of the box, they're your threat. They're the schmear campaign that you got to take them out politically. Come on. And I got to say, as a as a uh, further detour on this, I'm really kind of disappointed. The local police, by and large, do a good job. In fact, my friend was a, pretty big defender of the boys in blue and girls in blue for that matter. And he defended them after he was arrested. They're just doing their job. Really? Now he won't say it. And I don't think he necessarily would be even willing to say it, but I will. That's a big flaw. When you're violating people's rights, you don't get to just say, well, I was just following my job. When, when you're, I don't know, doing something that's just plain icky because your superior officer told you to really where's your discretion now look somebody makes or somebody breaks a rule somebody violates the law and they're potentially unknowing of that don't you owe them don't you owe them just a little bit hey you're a good law-abiding citizen we know you you know you can't do that here right oh oh no man oh, i'm sorry let me go fix that isn't that the way you would handle that Wouldn't you give somebody a fair warning, a heads up? Now they're going to argue that, well, they had the signs up, right? You know, they, we, there's no excuse. Yeah. Well, those signs don't exactly comply with the law. And I did point that out when I spoke and they did acknowledge that they probably ought to check them to make sure they do comply with the law. Now I'm sure they're going to do their own internal investigation to determine that they followed the rules and that they've complied with the law. But I'm here to tell you, I took a picture that night because that was the first night I was even aware that those signs were posted and it's white lettering on glass that's backlit. And then unless you know where to look and you look right at it, you have no idea what that is because there's other signage up there. The law clearly states it must be contrasting one inch block letters. So that's not proper notification. And if there's not at least a fair warning, come on. But, you know, that's all right. The school board got what they wanted. They damaged an individual. The city council got what they wanted. He lost his election. So perhaps, perhaps the uh, DA will see the wisdom in not persecuting slash prosecuting a guy that really didn't do anything that justifies a third degree felony. Oh, and in case you didn't know, that same felony will deprive you of your license to carry. Tell me that ain't jacked up. Tell me that isn't very silly. Now, one can hope that the DA will show the same restraint and the same disinterest in political chicanery that he has in all the other things that have come before this. One could hope. Now, I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, McKinney's not a bad city. McKinney's a good city. McKinney's got a lot of great people here. Even on 
different sides of the aisle or different sides of political issues. And we don't go out to ruin people because we disagree with them. We don't go out to destroy them because we disagree with them. But apparently, this is what's at play here. Apparently, that was what the move was on Tuesday night. Well, let's just go try and take this guy down a peg. Now, fortunately, when you're another elected official, it's kind of difficult to take out another fellow elected official. Now, I know that the uh, McKinney ISD school board is going to modify their rules to, to rein in elected officials. But here's the thing. Just how binding are they? The school board didn't elect their members. We the people did. The school board can choose to make all the rules they want. And they could try to censure people that just dare disagree with them. But they can't do anything more than that. And just remember, what's good for the goose is better for the gander. Be really careful what you do and what you ask for because sometimes it comes back to bite you. Again, this isn't lost on me. It, it shouldn't be lost on you. It's just a sad display of abuse of power. And the people that perpetrated this, they're the ones that deserve to be reined in. They're the ones that deserve the punishment that they sought to hand out. They're the ones... They need to be put on notice. They're the ones that need to be voted out. So I'm going to wrap this early. It's Thursday evening. This was episode 175 titled when the mayor comes a knocking. Perhaps I should say when the mayor comes a call in. I don't know. That sounds maybe a tad salacious, but eh, make of it what you want. He's clearly not a friend of mine. Certainly not a friend of my friend my friend chad green he's not his friend either so look we're supposed to show decorum we're supposed to show restraint particularly when you represent people and well quite frankly in this instance the mayor didn't do what the mayor should have done in my humble opinion but after all this is according to callus and that's why you're listening hey have a great night and i'll see you on the other side